Muslim believer reading the Quran, chapter 3, starting in verse 151 till the end of the chapter. We will cast horror into the hearts of the disbelievers for associating false gods with Allah, a practice he has never authorized. The fire will be their home. What an evil place for the wrongdoers to stay. Constant threats of hell. I bet you there's a threat of hell every uh, 20 verses at least. Indeed, Allah fulfilled his promise to you when, when you initially swept them away by his will. Then your courage weakened and you disputed about the command and disobeyed. After Allah had brought victory within your reach, some of you were after worldly gain while others desired a heavenly reward. He denied you victory over them as a test, yet he has pardoned you and Allah is gracious to the believers. So whether you win or lose, just keep on believing and, and he'll still forgive you of your sins. So he's not going to protect you from battle. He's not going to actually make you successful, even though he promises that he will, because he also promises that he's going to allow you to lose just to test you. To scam. Remember when you were running far away in panic, not looking at anyone while the messenger was calling to you from behind? So Allah rewarded your disobedience with distress upon distress. Now do not grieve over the victory you were denied or the injury you suffered. And Allah is all aware of what you do. So it's always your fault no matter what, whether you win or, well, if you lose, it's always your fault. This is the same thing that Christians say. All evil is the result of human free will, and all good is just God doing good things because this is their concept of reality, which is skewed. Then after distress, he sent down serenity in the form of drowsiness, overcoming some of you while others were disturbed by evil thoughts about Allah, the thoughts of pre-Islamic ignorance. Hmm, I'm surprised they say pre-Islamic ignorance because I thought they'd pretty much say Islam goes all the way back to Adam. Uh, what is pre-Islamic? They ask, do we have a say in the matter? Say, O Prophet, all matters are destined by Allah. There you go. All matters are destined by Allah, both good and bad things. They conceal in their hearts what they do not reveal to you. They say to themselves, if we had any say in the matter, none of us would have come to die here. Say, O prophet, even if you were to remain in your homes, those among you who were destined to be killed would have met the same fate. Through this, Allah tests what is within you and purifies what is in your hearts, and Allah knows best what is hidden in the heart. So, if God wants you to die, you're going to die whether you're in battle or whether you're hiding in your house. So, no hiding from God. Indeed, those believers who fled on the day when the two armies met were made to slip by Satan because of their misdeeds, but Allah has pardoned them. So if they were made to slip by Satan, just a few verses ago it says Allah destines all things, so he must have destined Satan to cause them to slip. Surely Allah is all forgiving, most forbearing. <laughs> He's only forbearing to people who believe. O believers, do not be like the unfaithful who say about their brothers who travel throughout the land or engage in battle. If they had stayed with us, they would not have died or been killed. Allah makes such thinking a cause of agony in their hearts. It is Allah who gives life and causes death. And Allah is all seeing of what you do. So there you go. God or Allah gives life and causes death. The Bible says the same thing about uh, the Bible God. He gives life and he takes life away. But yet, a lot of Christians want to pretend like he doesn't. Should you be martyred or die in the cause of Allah, then his forgiveness and mercy are far better than whatever wealth those who stay behind accumulate. So, even if you die in battle, you're better off than those who disbelieve and stay and get rich in this life, I guess. Whether you die or are martyred, all of you will be gathered before Allah. So don't worry about death. You can go die in battle just believing Allah. It is out of Allah's mercy that you, O Prophet, have been lenient with them. Had you been cruel or hard-hearted, they would have certainly abandoned, abandoned you. So pardon them, ask Allah's forgiveness for them, and consult with them in conducting matters. 
Once you make a decision, put your trust in Allah. Surely Allah loves those who trust in him. So if they would have rejected Muhammad for not being lenient or being cruel and hard-hearted, I wonder why anybody accepts Allah because Allah is constantly threatening merciless torture for all eternity for whoever doesn't believe. So God, he is not merciful, even though he claims to be. If Allah helps you, none can defeat you. Right, so if Allah helps you, none can defeat, defeat you. But when you're defeated, that just means God didn't help you. But if he denies your help, then who else can help you? So in Allah, let the believers put their trust. So believe in Allah no matter what, whether you win or lose, because there is no other. Uh, and, if, and if God wants you to lose and wants you to die, then you're just going to die. So get over it. It is not appropriate for a prophet to illegally withhold spoils of war. And whoever does so, it will be held against them on the day of judgment. Then every soul will be paid in full for what it has done, and none will be wronged. Are those who seek Allah's pleasure like those who deserve Allah's wrath? Hell is their home. What an evil destination. So, evil destination. So, Allah created an evil destination for the unbelievers, for the disbelievers. Got to get those threats of hell in every few verses. They each have varying degrees in the sight of Allah, and Allah is all seeing of what they do. Indeed, Allah has done the believers a great favor by raising a messenger from among them, reciting to them his revelations, purifying them, and teaching them the book and wisdom. For indeed, they had previously been clearly astray. So if it's talking about Muhammad, raising up Muhammad, he recited the revelations and purified them. But how did he teach the book? Because he was illiterate. He couldn't, so I got problems with that. Why is it when you suffered casualties at Uhud, although you had made your enemy suffer twice as much at Badr, you protested? How could this be? Say, O Prophet, it is because of your disobedience. Surely Allah is most capable of everything. So whenever bad things happen, it's because you're disobedient. It's always your fault whenever something bad happens. God just decides to not help you when you're bad, and that's why you lose your battles and suffer losses. So what you suffered on the day of the two armies met was by Allah's will, so that he might distinguish the true believers. At least it's consistent. He allows you to lose so that he can... <laughs> he allows you to lose because you're a disab disbeliever and... Whoever loses a war should be cut out of Islam if they don't, I guess if they don't, I guess you just have to repent every time you lose a war because you say God only allows us to lose war when we disbelieve. And I thought I was a believer, but since we lost the war, obviously I wasn't. So I want to believe now. That's what you're expected to do. And expose the hypocrites. When it was said to them, come fight in the cause of Allah or at least defend yourselves, they replied, if we had known there was fighting, we would have definitely gone with you. They were closer to disbelief than to belief on that day. For saying with their mouths what was not in their hearts, Allah is all-knowing of what they hide. So quit lying and saying you would have went to battle. You were just a coward. Those who sat at home saying about their brothers, had they listened to us, they would not have been killed. Say, O prophet, try not to die if what you say is true. <laughs> try not to die. Because you're, if you're a disbeliever, you're going to go to hell. Never think of those martyred in the cause of Allah as dead. In fact, they are alive with their Lord, well provided for. So it's said this before also already in the previous chapter, I think. You should never consider that anyone who dies in a, as a Muslim is actually dead. They're still alive in heaven. Rejoicing in Allah's bounties and being delighted for those yet to join them. So those that are in heaven are rejoicing in heaven, in the gardens, and they are delighted for those that are going to come join them after they die. There will be no fear for them, nor will they grieve. Well, yeah, they're in heaven, so of course they're going to be happy. They are joyful for receiving Allah's grace and bounty in that Allah does not deny the reward of the believers. As for those who responded to the call of Allah and his messenger after their injury, 
Those of them who did good and were mindful of Allah will have a great reward. Those who were warned, your enemies have mobilized their forces against you, so fear them. The warning only made them grow stronger in faith, and they replied, Allah alone is sufficient as an aid for us, and he is the best protector. So they returned with Allah's favors and grace, suffering no harm. For they sought to please Allah, and surely Allah is the Lord of infinite bounty. That warning was only from Satan, trying to prompt you to fear his followers. So do not fear them. Fear me if you are true believers. O prophet, do not grieve those do not grieve for those who race to disbelief. Surely they will not harm Allah in the least. It is Allah's will to disallow them a share in the hereafter, and they will suffer a tremendous punishment. So when it says hereafter, that makes me think that it's saying, well, they're not going to get eternal life, but everybody gets eternal life. You just get eternal good things in a garden or eternal bad things in hell. So when he says disallow them a share in the hereafter, I think it's talking about the hereafter in the garden of heaven um, because everybody's going to live forever. <clears throat> You're just either going to be happy or tortured. Those who trade belief for disbelief will never harm Allah in the least, and they will suffer a painful punishment. So I, th I think it's more often than every 20 verses we get a threat of hell. Those who disbelieve should not think that living longer is good for them. Hmm. They are only given more time to increase in sin, and they will suffer a humiliating punishment. Wow. Definitely more than every 20 verses, the threats of hell. Allah would not leave the believers in the condition you were in until he distinguished the good from the evil among you. Nor would Allah directly reveal to you the unseen, but he chooses whoever he wills as a messenger. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and if you are faithful and mindful of Allah, you will receive a great reward. And do not let those who greedily withhold Allah's bounties think it is good for them. In fact, it is bad for them. They will be lashed or leashed by the necks on the day of judgment with whatever wealth they use to withhold. And Allah is the sole interior inheritor of the heavens and earth. And Allah is all aware of what you do. Indeed, Allah has heard those among the Jews who said, Allah is poor and we are rich. We have certainly recorded their slurs and their killing of prophets unjustly. Then we will say, taste the torment of burning. So uh, so he definitely pointing out the Jews here, uh, the Jews who mock the Muslims and saying they're rich, but the, the Muslims are poor. And, you know, the Muslim can just shout back, well, hey, at least you're going to burn in hell for all eternity. This is the reward for what your hands have done, and Allah is never unjust to his creation. Well, eternal torture to his creation is pretty unjust if you ask me. Those are the same people who say Allah has commanded us not to believe in any messenger unless he brings us an offering to be consumed by fire from the sky. Say, O prophet, other prophets did in fact come to you before me with clear proofs and even what you demanded. Why then did you kill them if what you say is true? If you are rejected by them, so too were messengers before you who came with clear proofs, divine books, and enlightening scriptures. Every soul will taste death, and you will only receive your full reward on the day of judgment. Whoever is spared from the fire and is admitted into paradise will indeed triumph, whereas the life of this world is no more than a delusion of enjoyment. So put all your eggs in the basket of life after death, and don't expect anything here and now. This is convenient for those who are ruling the world. You believers will surely be tested in your wealth and yourselves, and you will certainly hear many hurtful words from those who were given the scripture before you and from the polytheist. <clears throat> but if you are patient and mindful of Allah, surely this is the resolve to aspire to. Verse 187. Remember, O prophet, when Allah took the covenant of those who were given the scripture to make it known to people and not hide it, yet they cast it behind their backs and traded it for a fleeting gain. What a miserable prophet. 
Do not let those who rejoice in their misdeeds and love to take credit for what they have not done think they will escape torment. They will suffer painful punishment. More hell threats. To Allah alone belongs the kingdom of the heavens of the earth, and Allah is most capable of everything. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and earth, and the alteration of the day and night, there are signs for people of reason. So just because the sun comes up, just because it's day and night, that's proof that the Quran is true. Because the sun comes up every day and the moon and the moon or the day in the darkness. They are those who remember Allah while standing, sitting, and lying on their sides. Hmm. I've seen this verse before. Uh, something about lying on their sides. And reflect on the creation of the heavens and earth and pray, Our Lord, you have not created all this without purpose. Glory be to you. Protect us from the torment of fire. So even the believers have to ask God not to torture them in fire. Our Lord, indeed, those you commit to the fire will be completely disgraced, and the wrongdoers will have no helpers. Constant threats of hell. Our Lord, we have heard the caller to true belief proclaiming, Believe in your Lord alone, so we believed. Our Lord, forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and join us with the virtuous when we die. Our Lord, grant us what you have promised us through your messengers and do not put us to shame on judgment day for certainly you will never fail in your promise. So their Lord responded to them, I will never deny any of you, male or female, the reward of your deeds. Both are equal in reward. Those who migrated or were expelled from their homes and were persecuted for my sake and fought and some were martyred, I will certainly forgive their sins and admit them into the gardens under which rivers flow as a reward from Allah, and with Allah is the finest reward. Do not be deceived for the prosperity of the disbelievers throughout the land. It is only a brief enjoyment, then hell will be their home. What an evil place to rest. But those who are mindful of their Lord will be in gardens under, the, uh, under which rivers flow to stay there forever as an accommodation from Allah. And what is with Allah is best for the virtuous. Indeed, there are some among the people of the book who truly believe in Allah and what has been revealed to you believers and what was revealed to them. They humble themselves before Allah, never trading Allah's revelations for a fleeting gain. Their reward is with the Lord. Surely Allah is swift in reckoning. And the last verse of chapter 3. O believers, patiently endure, persevere, stand on guard, and be mindful of Allah, so you may be successful.